Okay, so we have looked at the Cauchy Riemann conditions. We have seen how you know, if a function is differentiable at a point, a function of a complex variable is differentiable at a point, then it must necessarily satisfy the Cauchy Riemann conditions. Right, so it turns out that the Cauchy Riemann conditions are not quite enough, they're not the sufficient conditions for differentiability. And so that's the topic for this lecture. And so we need something slightly more than Cauchy Riemann conditions. You know, this is somewhat a, a technical discussion, but we include it in the interest of completeness. And so we will look at an example of how you know these rather technical conditions uh, may also play a part. Right, so you know, given some function f of z, right, so it has a real part and an imaginary part. And so, you know, we might uh, think of a, a function of a complex variable as really you know, two functions of two real variables. So it is made up of a u and it's made up of a v. But we have seen that, you know, uh, both u and v being very nice functions of x and y does not guarantee that you know, the function f of z itself is a, is a nice function of z. Right? Meaning, uh, you know, differentiability of the function f of z is established only if, you know, not only are u and v very nice, but they are also sort of intimately connected to each other. Right? So, in particular, if f of z is differentiable at a point, then we have seen that the Cauchy Riemann condition must hold, and so do u by do x must be equal to do v by do do y, and do u by do y is equal to minus do v by do x. Right, so this is a necessary condition, but this these conditions by themselves don't quite carry differentiability. So let's look at an example, which is a rather contrived example where the Cauchy Riemann conditions hold, but differentiability is not guaranteed. Right, so so I mean, in some sense, differentiability requires that you know the the derivative is well defined and the derivative is well defined if the limit of you know which which comes in when we define the derivative is well defined and the way that the limit is well defined when you're dealing with a function of a complex variable is if it is if it takes the same value no matter in which direction you approach that point right so that is the absolute key starting point and so we will see how you know there is this artificial example where uh, the Cauchy Riemann condition hold at a point, but it's not differential. So consider this function f of z. So this function is defined in terms of u and v, right? So u of x comma y is separately defined. It's defined to be x plus y if you are on the x-axis or on the y-axis if x equal to zero or y equal to zero or and x equal to zero and y equal to zero. That's the origin also has this x plus y, and if everywhere else in the plane it's just one, right? And likewise, v of x plus y, x comma y is defined as minus x plus y if you are on either of the axes, x axis or the y axis, and it's one everywhere else. So it's somewhat of an abrupt function, and so that's where you will see, you know, that's how you know uh, it bodes trouble. Right? So we will see, but at the origin, we can verify that in fact the Cauchy Riemann conditions do hold. Right? So if you look at the origin and compute do u by do x, it's just this function, so it's going to be 1 and do v by do y is also 1, so do u by do x is equal to do v by do y and uh, do u by do y is equal to minus do v by do x which is also equal to 1, right. So, so if you blindly just check this, I mean it appears like Cauchy Riemann conditions hold, therefore it looks like this function should be differentiable. But let's go back to the original definition of the derivative and check if its derivative is well defined. Right? So how do we check this? We must work out this limit. Limit of f of z0 plus delta z minus f of z0 divided by delta z and delta z goes to 0 and regardless of which direction this delta z goes to 0 along, we must get the same value. If that happens, then it's a well-defined derivative. So let's start 
by approaching along the x-axis so which means we, we take delta z to be delta x and thus the limit is simply given by limit delta x going to 0 f of 0 plus delta x minus f of 0 the whole thing must be divided by delta x now what is this function as you know at this point 0 plus delta x so 0 plus delta x means it has only real part and so and the imaginary part is 0 right so y is 0 according to this definition if y is 0 then um, you have to use the first one so that gives you uh, u of uh, u, so u of uh, x comma y is x plus y right so in this case y is uh, 0 so you have uh, delta x uh, delta x minus i delta x so minus i delta x comes from v right so you have a plus plus x and a minus x plus x in this case is a delta x and minus x so you have to put i times v of x comma y so it is minus i times delta x minus f of 0 is just 0 right so divided by delta x so then of course delta x cancels throughout and so you are left with just one minus i so it's a very uh, straightforward exercise it's just use of the definition to compute this limit uh, when you are approaching you know delta x equal to 0 if you are coming along the x axis now we can do the same thing along the y axis if you are approaching the origin along the imaginary axis then we know that we must take delta z to be i times delta y so thus the limit is limit delta y going to 0 f of 0 plus i delta y minus f of 0 the whole thing must be divided by i times delta y after all delta z is i times delta y and so what about this function so now as far as this function is concerned you know x is 0 but y is um, delta y so if y is delta y so again you know x plus y and minus x plus y must must be used so it should be just delta y plus i delta y right so v is just y uh, delta y so therefore u plus iv is delta y plus i delta y minus zero because the function at the origin is zero the whole thing must be divided by i delta y so you get a cancellation of uh, delta y above and below and so you are left with 1 plus i divided by i which is uh, 1 minus i right? you can check this so indeed the limit is the same whether you approach the origin along the x-axis or along the y-axis so if we are we rush we might be tempted to think that you know the limit seems to be all good it's the same no matter which direction we approach from but we need to check just one more direction and then we see that it all falls apart right so yeah so like i said this is a rather peculiarly designed you know, artificially designed example so so if we approach uh, if we approach the limit along you know along a direction which is 45 degrees to the x and y axis so then you would say that delta y is equal to delta x then we would take the complex increment to be delta d z so you can also approach it along some angle theta other than 45 degrees but i'm just taking 45 degrees for convenience so then you'll see that the limit is delta x going to 0 f of 0 plus delta x plus i times delta delta x so now you have a real part and an imaginary part minus f of 0 divided by delta x plus i delta x so that's the key point so if there is both the real part and imaginary part then this function suddenly takes a value of 1 right so uh, so since it takes uh, since it takes the value so it uh, so, so the x component is 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 delta x and the y component is also delta x and so both u and v have to be 1 so in fact it so i should write it as 1 plus i so this should be 1 plus i it doesn't matter so much so um, whether you write it as 1 or 1 plus i so it, the, the key idea is that the numerator has just a constant there's a constant in the numerator but the denominator is becoming arbitrarily small there's a delta x so there is nothing 
in the numerator to cancel off this delta x, which means that the limit does not exist. Now suddenly it's blowing up, right? So this limit is, seems to be well defined only if you approach along the x-axis or along the y-axis, right? So otherwise it's not even well defined. So therefore differentiability is you know, falls apart here. So there is no derivative of this function at this point. It's a very arbitrary, it's a very artificial type of a function, but it's there to illustrate that you know you may have Cauchy Riemann conditions holding which is true here and yet the derivative is not well defined. So you know the, the main cause of difficulty here is you know these partial derivatives are not well defined in the entire neighborhood of the point of interest. The point of interest is the origin. So although at the point you have dou u by dou x and dou u by dou y and dou v by dou x and dou v by dou y they are all well defined and also they are you know conspiring in exactly the right way right so that Cauchy Riemann conditions hold but it turns out that you need more than that for this function to have differentiability at that point and that requirement is that you know there's a way to prove this recurrently of course we will not go into it but so the statement is that if your all these partial derivatives exist in the neighborhood around the point of interest and if there is continuity of these partial derivatives at the point of interest and Cauchy Riemann conditions hold then your function is going to be differentiable so in other words stated formally so if you have a function f of z which is given as u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y if it is differentiable it is differentiable at a point Right, so this is a sufficiency condition. So differentiable, it is differentiable at a point z naught equal x naught plus i times y naught. If there exists a neighborhood of x naught comma y naught, right? So which means that you have to consider some circular region with some radius, right? Whose, whose center is x naught comma y naught, throughout which these first order partial derivatives must exist, and they must also be continuous at x naught comma y naught, and in addition to satisfying the Cauchy Riemann conditions at that point, right? So so this extra technical requirement is also essential for, for differentiability, right? So like I said at the beginning, so this is a, a rather technical and, you know, uh, uh, somewhat involved uh, idea. And as a physicist, this, you know, this is the kind of detail that one usually doesn't need to bother about. And it's somewhat of a pathological situation, but we include this in a, you know such a discussion here in order for completeness and just to be aware that one has to be careful you know, with making statements in relation to differentiability cauchy riemann conditions for sure are essential but some something slightly uh, you know more is also required for sufficiency so that's all for this lecture thank you